Okay, the unit four test review. So this is going to be pre-filled out. I'm just going to go through and talk about it. So in number one, if you notice by sides, we have a three, four, and five different side lengths, so scalene. For angles, we have a right angle here, so we put right angle. <clears throat> For number two, these two hash marks say that these two sides are the same, making it an isosceles. And for angles, since this angle is 114 degrees, it's obtuse. For number three, the hash marks show you that this is also isosceles. Now, since this is 58 degrees, remember, opposite angles are going to be the same, so this is also 58 degrees right here. So this angle and this angle are the same. If you add those two together and subtract from 180, you still get an acute angle up here, which is why it's acute. All three angles are acute. All right. So we're looking for a median. Now remember, a median goes from a vertex to the opposite side and makes it equal. So we need, <clears throat> we need tick marks to show, hash marks, tick marks, to show equal sides. So here's a possibility, and here's a possibility. This one, though, is equal here and here, but notice how this does not come from a vertex. So this cannot be a median. But this midpoint G to L is a vertex. So therefore LG or GL is a median. It splits this side into two equal pieces and starts at a vertex. Altitude. Now remember an altitude must also come from a vertex and have a 90 degree angle. So therefore we need a right angle box C. So the only right angle boxes we have are right here and right here. Now again, does this start at a vertex? No, it does not. Find this right angle. Does it start at a vertex? Yes, it is. AN is an altitude. Now a perpendicular bisector needs the hash marks, tick marks, and a right angle box because it's got to be perpendicular, right angle, and go to the midpoint. So here we have two equal pieces and a right angle making IRRI a perpendicular bisector. And remember, this does not have to. It can come from a vertex, but it does not have to. An angle bisector splits an angle in two. Well, we only have three angles here. L, no hash marks here, arc marks. N, no arc marks. D, here we go. So those are marked equal. So DS is an angle bisector. Okay, label all the parts isosceles triangle and mark the congruent pieces. Well, I've got to write these down. So these are both legs. This is the base angle right here. This is the base angle. This is the base. And up here we have the vertex angle. The legs are equal and the base angles are equal. Okay, now MKC is an isosceles triangle with C as the vertex. So you can put the vertex anywhere. I just like to put it at the top. So there's my C, X plus 25, sorry, 85. And then my base angle K is 2X plus 35. My base angle M is 4X plus 25. Now since it's isosceles, I know this angle and this angle are equal to each other. 
so I set them equal to each other like so. I subtract 2x, subtract 25, divide by 2, and I get x is 5. Plug 5 in here, 5 times 4 is 20, plus 25 is 45. 2 times 5 is 10, plus 35 is 45 for both those, they're the same. And then this one, 85 plus 5 is 90, even though it doesn't look that way from the drawing because I didn't know what it was going to be. Okay, draw the picture. So, first off, WS is a bisector, an angle bisector. So I like to put W up here. I know WAV is my triangle. So I just draw straight down and mark these two angles equal. It says AWS, A to the W to the S, which is this angle, is 3x plus 19. Angle VWS, which is right here, is 5x plus 1. They must be equal to each other. I set them equal to each other and solve for x. Then it said find AWV. Now remember, careful, AWV is the whole thing. So I need to plug in 9 right here or right here and double it. So 9 times 5 is 45, plus 1 is 46, doubled is 92. Now this could have easily asked for AWS or VWS. You have to pay attention to what it's asking for. Okay, number 11, BOY. BZ is the medium, median, so I just put B at the top, meaning it's going to go to the midpoint of the other side marking these two parts equal. Now careful, notice yz, which is just this part right here, is 8x plus 6. Yo is the whole thing. So don't put 28 over here and say this equals 28. It doesn't. These are both 8x plus 6 because they're equal to each other. Therefore, two of these equal 28. x equals 1. Plug this back in, and you get 14 for both. <clears throat> Number 12, MIT. So MIT. Oops, I labeled that wrong. This should be a T right here. Because here's MO, my altitude, which is a 90 degree angle on the base right here. So IOM right here is 90 degree angle, these are both 90 degree angles, is this. So I distributed the 3 right away and set it equal to 90. These are very easy because you solve for x and there's no work to do here because you already know it's 90 by definition. Hit pause if you need to at any point. Okay, 13. This is a mid-segment. You know it's a mid-segment because this point here and this point here are midpoints. How do you know that? Because these two sides are equal to each other, and those two pieces are equal to each other, which makes these midpoints. The mid-segment connects the midpoints, and this piece right here is half of the pieces parallel to. Remember, you put your pencil here and just roll it down the parallel side. There's a two-to-one ratio. This is twice of this, and this is half whoops, of this. So 17. All right, so on this one, up here, this is the vertex angle, even though it's kind of turned to the side, because here are my two legs, and the opposite angles are equal. So we know x is 51, and if you add 51 to itself and subtract from 180, you get 78. Okay. Just got to be careful with this and take your time. This piece here is 14. If we take this and roll our pencil this way, it's parallel to y. y is half of that. So y is 7. Sorry, that got cut off. y equals 7. Right? And then over here, we have a 5. If we take this piece and roll our pencil this way, we get to the bigger piece, so we're going to double that and get 10. Easy enough. 
Okay, this point in the middle is our centroid. So I'm going to mark all my small pieces first in red. So small piece, small piece, small piece. I'm going to mark the bigger ones in green. Large, large, large. Now remember, the large pieces are twice the small pieces. So if this is 1, that makes this 2. If this is 8, being the bigger piece, I divide, and this becomes 2. And then this piece is 10, but the hash marks show you that these two pieces are equal, so 10 divided by 2 is 5. Okay, distance. So for this one, remember, this is square root. And you just do x minus x squared plus y minus y squared. Be careful of this. You're going to have a double negative here. Okay, so 9 minus 3 is 6. 6 squared is 36. 8 plus 2 is 10. Squared is 100. So your answer is either the square root of 136 or, as a decimal, 11.7. Number 18, x minus x, boom, y minus negative 4 plus 4. That's 0, that's simply 4, 4 squared is 16, square root of 16 is 4. And that's it, very simple formula. <clears throat> Okay, on this one, all you're doing is plotting these three points, and you're doing the distance formula three times. Okay, so you're going to do, you got erased here, but this is DE. And I like to label them so I know what I'm doing, keep my points right. This is EF, and this is DF. So for DE, I did 2 minus negative 2, which becomes plus and negative 2 minus 8. That leads to 16 plus 100, 4 squared plus 10 squared, sorry, negative 10 squared, so 116. EF, negative 2 minus 5 squared, 8 minus 9 squared, so that's negative 7, and negative 1, Squared gives you 49 plus 1, which is 50. And then finally, df, 2 minus 5, negative 2 minus 9. That leads to negative 3 squared, which is 9. Negative 11 squared, which is 121, 130. All three distances are different. Therefore, this is scalene. All right, 20. <clears throat> Here, you're simply doing, I started with this one, so I did, what, remember, it's y minus y first on top. Yum yum's on the picnic table. So 3 minus 5, boom, over 8 minus negative 3, which is, becomes plus 3. So that's negative 2 over 11. Parallel's the same. Perpendicular is opposite and reciprocal. This one is just right there, two-thirds. Two-thirds, negative three-halves. And in this one, you just got to count from this point, up five, right four. Up five, right four. And the perpendicular line would be negative four-fifths. All right. So the slope of these two lines, both four-thirds, equal means parallel. Negative one-fifth and four-fifths, well, one's negative, one's positive, but this is not the reciprocal of that. Therefore, it's neither. Negative one-fifth and five over one, one negative, one positive, five over one flips to one over five, perpendicular.
Okay, so solve for x, so that vp is an angle bisector, which means 1 equals 2. Now, it says angle 2 is 7x minus 1. That's the part. TVU is the whole thing. So you need two of these, 7x minus 1, 7x minus 1, to be equal to 12x plus 10. You distribute the 2. I subtracted 12x and added 2. Divided by 2, and it gave me 6. That's all I had to do. Solve for x. Solve for y so that GW is a perpendicular bisector. Well, that just simply means that this must be equal to that. So I set them equal to each other. This time I subtracted 3y and added 7. Divide by 2, y is 8. Number 28. Again, draw out a picture, BE. So I put, I know I'm going to have an angle bisector, so I just put B at the top. Here's my E, A, B, C. E, B, A is 6x plus 7. E, B, A. Okay? C, B, E, which is the other side, is 8x minus 3. But they're equal to each other. When I set them equal to each other, I get x is 5. Now, careful, it's asking for A, B, C, the whole thing. So plug in 5 to either one of these and double. Or plug 5 into both of them and add. Whatever. So 6 times 5 is 30. Plus 7 is 37. Doubled is 74. <clears throat> 29. TZ is an altitude. So that means it comes straight down, 90 degree angle. Okay? TZY, which is right here, is 3x plus 30. So that equals 90. Subtract 30, divide by 3, x is 20. And then TZO has to be 90 by definition. And that's it. And last but not least, number 30, CY is a medium, which means it comes out here to make this side and this side equal. Y is the midpoint of AB. Now careful, AY, which is right here, 2x plus 5, and AB, which is the whole thing, is 7x plus 4, which means this is 2x plus 5. It is not 7x plus 4. So two of these equal that. Two of these equal that. Distribute the two. Subtract 4x, subtract 4, divide by 3, x is 2. Now careful, ask for yb, which is this piece over here. So plug 2 in here. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 5 is 9. And that's it.